Hey everybody, it's me, Nelson Everhart, back again with another musical tour of The Spiral. This w- was one I was kind of dreading. Um, my This probably was my least favorite world for my music. And I don't hate it, it's just, it was actually moving when I got the call from King's Isle to write uh, the music for this world. I didn't really get a chance to polish it up the way that I normally like to. So what I did was I took uh, this track out. Somebody had actually requested this one. Uh, It's the Wisteria Dungeon theme. At the time, we were just calling it the Intermediate theme. And I didn't even really know that it was uh, Wisteria. They were referring to it as uh, Pigswick Academy. And so the only thing that I really knew uh, about the whole thing was that it was kind of a competing wizard school to Ravenwood. And the text I was given uh, is one line which was an exploratory piece, medium excitement and gallop into mellow lulls. So I think it galloped really well into mellow lulls, but this is back when Kings and I were still kind of working on uh, the working relationship and trying to figure out how to best kind of communicate what they needed. This was a pretty tight turnaround. (laughs) I I remember them calling and asking, hey, do you have time to do this? And I was like, "Uh, yeah, I think so. I I set up my studio before I set up my bed. So what I wanted to do is to re-examine what I wasn't happy about and remix it a bit and try and add something that I thought was missing. And I I discovered some neat lines in here that I wound up not hating. (laughs) So here is the Pigswick Academy Intermediate track, which is now known as the Wisteria Dungeon theme. but uh, an actual ending. (laughs) I tagged a little piece at the end there to kind of give a little more finality. The original piece was only a minute and a half long. Uh, The Pigswick Academy or Wisteria was kind of a smaller release there. So hopefully you're liking the new additions there uh, and the the remix. I've tried to notate uh, the new, like completely new sounds that I've uh, added in there. A new violin solo part. Um, I did put this violence piccato part in there to try and strengthen some of that section i added a lot of new woodwind stuff in there um just little harmonies here let the flute and the clarinet you can see that um the flute and the clarinet take the you know lead melodies in a lot of places there and there's some harmony with them and the bassoon i also added an orchestral bass drum sound this is from uh the cine samples uh cine perk a new trumpets i this is a new horn part as well. I forgot to put it in there. So I really didn't have a whole lot to go on. I had some screenshots and, you know, kind of the description of Pigswick Academy as this place that was kind of a similar but rival school to Ravenwood. Uh, so I wanted to draw a lot of commonalities between them. I wanted to kind of make it seem like the flip side of, of the same coin. So there's some of the same uh, harmony and tonality and chords in there uh, and feel and orchestration. So I, I used the cellist and the harp. 
which I used a lot in uh, Ravenwood too. I'd, I've always loved the Chillest ever since I first heard Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies. It just creates such a magical sound. This is from East West Symphonic Orchestra. And then I had the Silver Package, and I had that way back in the day when I was first writing for Wizard 101 and discovered that Chillest sound and used it a lot. It speaks very well, but it also has like a lot, you know, the warm body that you want to hear from the Chillest. Uh, and the harp in there too. I really wanted to revisit, I think, uh, some of the, the writing that I did for Wizard City and decided that I could use this as kind of a, a way to do that using the similar orchestration, but finding a different way to kind of express uh, the same ideas. Together, I think these instruments work really well. And Celeste also has such a beautiful range. I mean, it can play the really sparkly stuff up top. And then down the lower range of it, it's really got those nice low bell tones. One of the first things when I listened back to this that I wasn't quite happy with was the da, da, da. I really wanted to get that to speak a little bit better, which is where a lot of these new instruments came from. The new flute. You can hear me trying to really punching that. Uh, punching the staccato in there to try and get that like intermediary note to speak. Da, da, da. It's, it's still hard with samples in certain situations to get some of those notes to kind of speak and you wind up spending a lot of time moving them earlier and later and lengthening the note and shortening the note and messing with the velocities to try and get the, the correct staccato to play in there. I usually wind up stacking a lot of stuff to try and get it to sound right. Also add a trumpet and horn in there. Brass is kind of mixed down. I wanted to hear more from the woodwinds in here. I decided that Wisteria and the Pigswick Academy was more kind of, you know, pomp and circumstance, which is, you know, sometimes the flute and the, and the clarinet and the bassoon can speak that language. And then as kind of the answer to that, there's all the low notes. So I have... There's a lot of things doing those low notes uh, and the timpani and then the bass drums doing the start to that to define where that roll starts. I do like that orchestral bass drum. Nice. It's duh. Like that attack on that downbeat there. These are all the low notes here. You can hear it swelling up. All right, so moving into the main body is really uh, this figure here. There we go. When I'm asked, you know, where, where, where the ideas come from, I probably would have come up with that pattern just to set up a groove and then brought the bassoon melody here on top of that. reading between the lines of what King Zell was giving to me and it really felt like the the Pigswick Academy they were a little snooty you know just the stuck up school <laughs> a little bit you know strutting around with your nose in the air character or I did add a cello to try and just get a little more edge to that bass line in there <laughs> find those notes a little bit easier. I'll tell you what one of the hardest parts to do is the little the notes that's pushing off of the bottom. Do, do, ba da, da, right? This note here. It kind of bounces off that note to get to the top part. That's sort of the feeling that I had uh, when I was playing it. And trying to situate these notes correctly <laughs> in like, first of all, just musically correctly, but also to get it, the sound itself that I'm using to speak at the right time. When, when you've got, you know, quick notes like this, tenths of a second, you know, really can change the feel uh, of the, of the groove that you're going for here. I spent a lot of time going in and really trying to massage these. You'll see that it's not actually 
you know, on this 16th note here, it's just slight, it's kind of in between, it's like on the 32nd note in between uh, those two 16ths. I did add a little clarinet harmony here at the end. Uh, the little dun da da. I'm sure I've used that figure somewhere else. I think I've talked about it even, but this is another tricky thing to do. This is something that when you have a you know a 16 piece violin section, and and you're playing something really kind of intricate and complicated like this line here. So when when that's really when you have something very intricate and specific like that, I think it helps to kind of round it out with some more sounds. I've also got this violin uh, spiccato. This is from Adio. It's their Allegro violins, uh, and I love the uh, spiccato. And I usually use it to kind of stack it on top of my my general spiccato and staccato sounds from uh, Symphobia. It's really it's a little psycho there for a minute. Dia, 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 dia. And there's a, I left it very sloppy and I thought it sounded um, better giving it a little humanity in there. Uh, but I've got, I've stacked a lot of different things. I have for the higher strings, this is my LA, uh, LA scoring strings. This is my Symphobia short notes. And then this is that violin short and then a, a cello short as well. Little of everything. Bass is doing this little counter melody figure in here. Right here. There we go. Ultra low. So let's see, what are flute and clarinet doing here? Yeah, and I'm tr here. I'm echoing um, that that same rhythm that I was talking about before. The da 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 da. It's really, really thinking about what you know. What is the central idea? Right. A lot of that. It's it's really just the da 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 da. Right. And a kind of extension of that same idea. And then in this next section, we're still, I'm still working on that central idea, exploring it from a different angle, right? Different instruments, different uh, situations. This is drawn out a little bit longer. What it is about these waltzes <laughs> i always just feel like there's a big lady hippopotamus skating on a on a pond with a, it's just it's just kind of like the comedic bombast of it you know it's it's such a you think of like a strauss waltz that are they're also very pretty and then when i do waltzes it sounds like and it's it's still extending that idea. We're still working on a central idea, right? Da da da, and now it's da 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 da. So every little section here has just been kind of a modification to that central idea. There's times when I know that I need to get to a new key, um, and I'll I'll just sort of mess around until I find something kind of compelling and interesting in the harmony. I'm not sure how I would have come up with those changes. It's a very ear bending uh, section there. It's not. It's not super facile. It, it doesn't really just roll off the ear, I guess. <laughs> it's a, it works a little bit hard to get it into the next section. But again, we're galloping into mellow lulls, right? Yes. <laughs> Here, this is where I added this new violin solo uh, part. 
you have a, sort of a general generic string sound that you're using, like a, an ensemble string sound, playing in the top voice with a really nice solo sound like, really lends a lot of credibility to uh, what's beneath it. So that's, I did that here. Here's a solo sound. Right, a really pretty sound. Uh, that's LA scoring strings. And then together. Don't notice the mushiness so much, right? So here you've got the flute and clarinet playing together. All right, so here I actually, uh, this is a new part. Uh, if you've heard this song for 20 hours straight, uh, like a lot of players of the game do. Uh, you may notice that this is a little modified. I actually just heard a little section here. I was like, that could, this little turnaround back to the um, main key could really be uh, ornamented and explored a little bit more. So, so I did a little bit of that here. <laughs> Catch it. <laughs> there it was. And that's playing at the same time the Pigswick Academy theme is playing. Right. That, I might be gilding the lily there. <laughs> I might may be like, you guys get the joke, you guys get the joke. Let me hammer it in your ears. That was just, it was something fun to do. That wasn't in the original. I was just, uh, I was riffing here and having a good time. I heard a little bit of my uh, hero, John Williams, <laughs> in, the, in, in the harmony here specifically. Yeah, right there, that change. That change is really necessitated by the uh, melody here, right? That note that's sort of just thrown in there to, to be an ear twister. It's a little wink to the audience. It's like, yeah, we know these guys are snooty, right? Really building up to an ending here. I, I normally try not to do this too hard because it telegraphs that, you know, the loop is coming. And I, I don't want it to make it too obvious that, you know, here's, hey, we're building up to an ending. I want the, the a, a looping piece to really feel as smooth as it can. But sometimes you just, you know, <laughs> you really want to tie it up. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, I made something more palatable <laughs> to my ears out of that. Kind of enjoyed it. Hope you did too. Our list of remaining worlds is now dwindling. Now that I've, uh, I was dreading this one a bit and dragging my feet on it. But uh, once somebody requested a track from it, I was I took it as a challenge. All right, let's you know let's give that one a try. If you've got uh, a favorite from the worlds left over, please let me know down in the comments which uh, track you'd like to hear me tear apart here, and I'll see if I can accommodate that. Great guys, thanks.